In this video, I want to talk about one of the major causes of infertility in women. And um, this is due to thin uterine lining. Now, if you have a very thin uterine lining, you find it very difficult to get pregnant. And most times, your, your cycles, your menstrual cycles will be very irregular. Now, if you go ahead and opt for IVF with a thin uterine lining, uh, there is more chances that your IVF might fail. So, uh, your doctor is meant to check the thickness of your uterine lining to make sure that it is above um, 8 millimeters. So, now what you, you're meant to be um, uh, after is to have a thick uterine lining because uh, it's easier for implantation to take place if you have a thick uterine lining. And to have a thick uterine lining, there are several factors that can influence it. One, number one, is the estrogen hormones in the body. The estrogen is the hormone responsible for, uh, for the female sex uh, reproductive organs. So uh, if the estrogen hormones are very low, you are most likely to have a very thin uterine lining. And the more, the more you age as a woman, the more chances uh, that you, you have a very thin uh, uterine lining. Uh, the good news is that there are several herbs and several therapies that can help you increase your estrogen production. The second factor why you might um, have thin uterine lining is due to inadequate blood flow in your body. When there is inadequate blood flow in your body, it is directly proportional to inadequate blood flow in the pelvic region. Now, uh, people who have a sedimentary lifestyle or people who have dex jobs that, that doesn't demand them to move around, uh, most times have blood flow to the uterus compromised. So if you, you don't have proper blood flow in your body, you might likely experience thin uterine lining, which might lead to infertility. So I suggest you find time in the day to move around, exercise, do yoga, do cycling, in order to improve the, the blood flow in your body and also improve the blood flow in your pelvic region for you to have a thick uterine lining. Another factor that might lead to a thin uterine lining is also um, no, known as uterine fibroid. Now, uh, fibroid does this by pressing on the vital organs that supply blood to the endometrium. Now, same in, the fa in this factor is also called fibroid embolization. This is actually the, the process of cutting out blood supply to the fibroid cells with the sole purpose of starving the fibroid and shrinking the fibroid. This process can also cut other vital organs that supply blood to the endometrium. And when there is less supply of blood to the endometrium, it might lead uh, to thin uterine lining. Another factor that might lead to thin uterine lining is D and C. Uh, usually, uh, doctors carry D and C when there is issues uh, with uh, the uterus, maybe after, after a miscarriage or after abortion. So they do it to actually remove or clear the tissues in the uterine lining. When this is performed wrongly, it can actually cause the basalis layer of the endometrium to be removed. And once this uh, layer is removed, the endometrium might not be able to grow back again. Another factor on the list uh, on why your uterine lining gets thin is excessive use of Clomid. Uh, Clomid is actually um, one of the first drugs prescribed to women who are having issues of relating. Now, the way Clomid works, uh, Clomid works as an anti-estrogen anti to help stimulate ovulation in women who suffer ovulatory dysfunction. Now, the problem with this uh, drug, Clomid, is when it's used in excess, it can thin, it can thin the endometrium. So, uh, in as much as this drug can use to induce ovulation, it can also cause infertility when used in excess. Another factor on the list, uh, on the list of the things, factors that can cause thin uterine lining is long-term use of birth control drugs that contains progestin. So you need to watch out for birth control drugs that 
contains progestin because our uh, progestin has been shown to to uh, uh, weaken the uterine lining, which might cause um, weak endometrium. So uh, watch out for drugs that contains progestin and try not to use them for a very long time. Uh, some of the best therapies to help increase estrogen levels in women are herbal and natural uh, remedies. So some of the best herbs to use in this case are red clover, uh, shatavari, royal jelly, ground flaxseed, maca roots, and wild yam. All these have, have been shown to help increase the estrogen hormone production in women. I talked about how inadequate blood flow uh, in your body can actually lead to thin uterine lining. I want to give you a list of um, herbs and foods that can help you uh, in your blood building. So uh, the idea here is to eat food rich in iron and also to eat food rich in iron absorption. So some of the foods that are rich in iron are beets, spinach, uh, beans, pumpkin seeds and asparagus. And uh, some of the foods rich in iron absorption, absorption are broccoli, strawberry, tomatoes, and green pepper. Again, uh, is to also consider um, herbs that are rich in iron. And one of my best herbs that I know that is very, very good when it comes to blood building is the donkwai, also known as Angelica sinensis. Again on the list is nettles and um, raspberry leaf. So I really want to take this time to plead with you guys uh, to follow me on my social media um, network uh, more especially instagram and twitter you can see the link uh, the address to the link written on this video and also also i want you to uh, subscribe to my youtube channel this is the way i have the motivation to create more videos and uh, i really really appreciate if you can do this 